AWS Web Application Firewall, or WAF for short, is an important service for any application that hosts publicly facing APIs. In this video, I'm going to briefly explain to you what WAF is all about and talk about the core features before later in the second half, bringing you into the AWS console to walk you through the process of setting up your own web application firewall. So let's start with an example to understand where AWS WAF fits in and why it's important. What I have in front of you here are two common ways to build APIs. The top example is with an API gateway backed by a Lambda function. And the bottom one is with a load balancer fronting traffic for ECS or EC2. In a perfect world, we would only need to worry about users calling our APIs in an expected way. But today, there are a lot of bad actors that can threaten our system and our pocketbooks. Some of these threats can include DDoS or distributed denial of service attacks. These attacks flood your endpoints with server traffic to prevent legitimate users from accessing your applications. SQL injections, which attempt to embed malicious query statements that can expose access to your data. XSS or cross-site scripting attacks, which attempt to inject malicious snippets of code into your APIs to gain control of your system. And finally, since AWS uses a pay-per-use model, a large influx of requests have the potential to consume resources and result in an unexpected bill. These are just a couple of examples of some of the popular threats, but there are many, many more. AWS WAF sits in front of your API endpoints to act as a first layer of defense. It's a service that enhances application security by examining incoming traffic and rejecting it if it matches a certain pattern. You can use it to prevent SQL injection, XSS, ban certain IPs or CIDR blocks, and a whole lot more. It even supports rate limiting to prevent abuse by clients. You can use WAF to protect many of your publicly facing resources. The list of supported services include CloudFront, API Gateway, Application Load Balancers, Cognito User Pools, AppSync, and AppRunner. You can easily add WAF in front of one or more of these services with a single configuration. But before we can get into the console and show you how to set up WAF, let's quickly touch on three important concepts you need to know about. First, Web Access Control Lists or Web ACLs. Second, Rules. And third, Rule Groups. Web ACLs are the top level entities that are applied to resources that you would like to protect. Web ACLs have a dashboard that show you how much traffic is being allowed or blocked based on its configuration. Within Web ACLs, you can create rules. Rules define how to inspect incoming requests and the actions to take if the request matches the inspection criteria. For example, you can configure a rule to look for SQL injection within the request, look for a specific or group of IP addresses, or look for traffic originating from a certain country. You can apply just a single rule, or you can create multiple and join them together with logical operators like AND or OR. When traffic matches a rule, you define the action that you would like to take. This includes allow to let the request through to the resource, block to deny the request, captcha to challenge the user with a puzzle to solve, and count, which simply counts the number of requests that match the pattern. Counting is useful for testing a rule before you apply it. Keep in mind that rules are not an actual entity in AWS WAF. This means they don't have an ID or an Amazon resource name, and you won't be able to find them anywhere in the console under any rules section. They strictly exist as a JSON object that you define to be used for your ACL. There are two ways to create rules, either directly within the web ACL or as part of a rule group. Rule groups are collections of rules that you can apply to multiple different web ACLs. So for example, if you have a set of rules that are specific to your company, you can create a rule group and apply them to multiple different web ACLs. You can also choose to buy pre-created rule groups from the AWS marketplace. These rule groups are created by AWS partners and protect your resources from a variety of threats. Keep in mind though, that to use rule groups created by partners, additional fees will apply. So this is a broad overview of AWS Web Application Firewall or WAF for short. Let's jump into the console now, where I'll walk you through how to set up WAF for an API gateway endpoint that's backed by a Lambda function. All right, so here we are in the AWS console. Let's get started by navigating over to the WAF section of the console. So just typing in WAF, going over to WAF and Shield here. 
And before we get into creating our web ACL, let me just briefly explain to you some of these other navigation options on the left hand side here under the under the WAF section. So web ACLs, these are the access control list. We're actually gonna be creating one for this demonstration and associating our API gateway with it. So we'll get into this more a little bit later. But you'll probably be spending the majority of your time in web ACLs if you're using WAF. Bot control dashboards give you visibility into bots that are currently attacking or attempting to fish for data from your APIs. And then you have application integration. This is more so if you want to integrate via the AWS WAF SDK to customize things like placement of the CAPTCHA puzzle within your application, so things like that. Those ones aren't too important, the bot control dashboard and the application integration. The three here that are important are IP sets, regex pattern sets, and rule groups. Now, what IP sets allow you to do, and if we go into this really quick, I can show it to you. IP sets allow you to create either a specific IP or an entire CIDR block worth of IPs that you can block. And so you can create kind of an IP set that's a reusable kind of configuration that contains these IP addresses and then associate it with your web ACL. So you can create it once, kind of like what you can do with rule groups. Uh, you create an IP set once, and then you can associate it with multiple different web ACL. So very, very handy. Similarly, you can do the same thing with regex. So if you want to create regular expressions to evaluate your incoming traffic, then you can do the same thing, create a reusable pattern, then you can apply again and again. And then rule groups are the collection of independent rules. If you create a rule group, you're going to see a very similar wizard when we create the web ACL. The only difference is that with rule groups, you have the ability to create a collection that you can apply to many different web ACLs, not just the one that you're creating at the time. So those are the important ones there. Now there's also the AWS Marketplace Managed Rules. Now these are the ones that are available from AWS partners that do charge a fee. Um, these are, are kind of curated by AWS itself so you can trust that they are accurate and effective. So you can see here things like API security rules, bot protection, and there's a whole bunch, common vulnerabilities, CVE rules. There's like a, a ton here that you can select from. Be careful with this though because they do charge a monthly fee for these. So if you do choose to use one, uh, be sure that you just kind of take a look into what the monthly bill is and then factor that into your cost as well. So these are the important bits of AWS WAF. So what I want to do now is get started by creating a web ACL and then associating it with our API gateway endpoint that's backed by a Lambda function. So let's get started with that. So we're going to go into web ACL here. We're going to go to the right hand side and create a web ACL. And then you can see here, it's asking us initially, what do we want to create this for? Amazon CloudFront distributions or regional resources. Now, since CloudFront is global, it's only like, that's why, oops, I didn't realize it would do that. Okay, so it turns out if you click on CloudFront, it's going to rechange the wizard, probably because you need to fill out specific things. But for regional resources, like typically you assign a specific region to things like a load balancer, or API gateway. And so that's the one that we're actually going to use here. So regional resources, make sure to specify the region that you're going to select this web ACL rule. I'm just going to call this demo description is optional. You also get metrics that, that tell you a little bit about the usage of your web ACL, which can be useful. Okay, so let's scroll down a little bit here to complete the first step. So associated AWS resources. So these are the things that we want to protect using this web ACL. So I'm gonna click on add AWS resources. And so you can see the different options that are available to you. So application load balancers, app runner, cognito user pools, and API gateway, which is the one that we are going to use here. Now, one specific limitation of WAF with API gateway, which is that it's only available for REST APIs that you create in API gateway. It's not available for HTTP or WebSockets. So that's just something to keep in mind here. It is a limitation. Hopefully they come out with parity soon, but since this one is a REST API, we're gonna go ahead and click on WAF demo API, and we're gonna go ahead and click on add. Now keep in mind that you can also add multiple, right? If you wanted to add, you know, a Cognito user pool as well to this, you can click on add resources, you can go into user pool, add this guy as well. So now we have multiple here, right? So you can protect many, many different resources under a single web ACL. So let's just get rid of this guy and go to remove. So we're just gonna keep the API gateway endpoint. 
And then there is some settings here for what's the body size limit. We're gonna keep the default here, 16 kilobytes. That's the maximum request body size that WAF can inspect. Uh, so you can increase this as well. I believe there, yeah, there is some pricing implications on this. So keep that in mind if you want to increase this number beyond the default. Okay, so let's go ahead now and click on next in the bottom right. And this is where we are going to create our rules. And we need to explain a little bit about this web ACL capacity units or WCUs. Um, so rules are the things that inspect your traffic, right? These are the things that you configure that will look at the content of the request that's coming in and then evaluate it to see if it matches this rule, right? And so uh, let's go ahead and create like a very simple rule here. So we're gonna go to add rule. Rules. Uh, so if you want to create managed rules or you want to add a managed rule, which is one that's provided by AWS or a partner, you would click on add managed rule groups. Let me actually just show you that really quick. So there's managed rule groups here that are vended by AWS. These are created by AWS. These do have a monthly fee. If you want to enable it, you just tick on this button here. It looks like there's some stuff that we need to do if you want to do that. So it supports like account creation, fraud prevention, account takeover, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot to see here. They also have the price. They also have some free ones that you can, can add. They have this concept of capacity, which I'll get to in a minute. So it's, it's probably a good idea to add these free ones. I mean, you, you might as well. There's nothing really stopping you. And then these are the ones that are provided by the AWS partners. So Cloudbrick Corp, for example, bot protection rule set. So you have to subscribe via the AWS marketplace first in order to gain access to it. And then you can enable it here. So that's how you would do this if you wanted to use some of the pre-created rule groups that are available to you. But let's go back. Uh, how do I get out of this? I wanna go back to describe, okay. Do we have to do this again? I hope not. Okay, we're gonna go back to next. And then I don't wanna add rule groups. Can I just say add rules? Sorry, this UI is a little bit confusing. Okay, that's fine. I don't think we added anything. Yeah, we're still at zero of 5,000. So let's go ahead and create like a very simple rule here. So I'm gonna add my own rules and rule groups. And this is where you can specify some of the details of the rule that you would like to create. And there's two ways to do it. Uh, there's either through the visual editor, which I'm gonna use, or there's the JSON editor, which you can use that basically you just provide a JSON object that defines the specifications of the rule. Now, if you're already familiar with creating rules, then you can do it through JSON. It's probably more effective to do it that way. Uh, but if you wanna do it kind of visually, like I will in this demonstration, then you wanna use the rule visual editor. So a couple things things to understand here. So if you created an IP set as part of the uh, what I was showing you originally, there's that IP set section on the main dashboard over on the left hand side, you'd be able to click it here and then select the IP set, right? So it's asking you for an IP set that you want to block. So that's how this would connect. If you want to block an IP or a cider block of IPs, you would do that this way. You can also do the rule group. So if you created the rules that you want to reuse, you would click on rule group uh, and this allows you to just just kind of one click create and associate the rule group here. But if you want to create the rules directly within the web ACL, like we're doing right now, you want to use rule builder. So let's get started with this. So let's create a rule that will, let's say blocks Canada. Okay. Anyone from Canada, Canada origin blocker. And so that, that's the, the desired state. We want to block me because I'm from Canada. So hopefully if this thing works, we should see like a forbidden or whatever gets thrown back. And so you have two options that you can do, right? There's a regular rule, which we're going to actually use to block the origin country of Canada. And then separately, there's a rate based rule. And this is more for throttling. So you can see here, limit the request rates for requests that match your criteria. So if you want to deny traffic from users that are coming from a certain IP address that are a little bit too chatty, maybe it's suspicious suspicious uh, traffic or potential bot traffic, then you can use the rate-based rule. And if you take a look at this, if you scroll down, you can specify what you want the limit to be. I believe this is in like transactions per, oh, per window. And they have like a number between 100 and 220 million. Uh, and then you can aggregate by source IP, at IP address in the header, custom stuff, or if you want to count, and then limiting all the requests or considering all the requests or only the requests that match the, the criteria in the rule statement. So there's a bunch that you can do with rate limiting to kind of detect some chatty actors, but uh, not what we want to do here. So let's just use a regular rule. Okay. And let's start with something very simple. We're going to come back to this a little bit later after we've tested a simple one to see how this works. So if a request 
matches the statement. You have a couple options. Matches all of the statements. So if you wanted to find multiple rules, you can use an and. Matches at least one of the statements, which is an or. So you can have multiple of them. And if it matches one, then it's good. Or does not match a statement. Now, the reason this one is important is because you can you can kind of like do the inverse. Like if, if you, you can set up a rule that everything should match. And if it doesn't, then you deny effectively. So you can kind of use the negatives here to get some, some interesting behavior. So let's just keep it simple and say matches the statement. And then we need to say, what do we want to inspect as part of this statement? And there's a bunch of options here, right? You can say originates from the country, which is what I'm going to use later from a specific IP address, has a label. You want to look inside the header, all of the headers, cookie, single query parameter, all query parameters, path, query string, body, HTTP method, fingerprint. There's a ton of stuff that you can can use here, right? And so what we want to do is we want to say origin originates from a country in, and then you can choose the country code. So let's say Canada here and okay, source IP address. That's fine. Then what do we want, want to do? Then we want to block it. Okay. And so if you're originating from Canada, then we're going to block. The other options are allow, count, captcha, and challenge. You can either kind of just take the default, which will throw a forbidden, or you can define a custom response here. If you want to like throw a custom response code back to the user, you can do that as well. You can also add a label, which help you kind of aggregate and collect the information and visualize it a little bit better. Anyways, that's fine. Let's go ahead and click on add rule now. So now we have this rule and I'll show you later how we can enhance this to add a and statement. So we have multiple different rules. A token domain list. This is useful if you you want to uh, use CAPTCHAs and you have an application and you have like multiple protected applications. So you don't like double ask someone with a CAPTCHA challenge to annoy them. So you can use this for that, but not something that we're going to use in this demonstration. So let's carry on and go to the bottom right now. Click on next to proceed. Uh, we can see that we have this concept of priorities. And so if you have multiple different rules, you can kind of click on them, move them up or down to determine what the the priority is to evaluate them, what order to evaluate them. Oh, one thing I forgot to ask, we should go back or not ask, but tell you about is this concept of WCUs or I think it's a write capacity units or some capacity unit. Uh, basically what, how this works is that the more complex your rules are that you associate with your ACL, the higher this number will get. Okay. So since this was like a very simple check, we're just checking for origin country, which is like a very trivial thing to do inside of the like evaluation of the traffic. It's only one unit of WCUs. But if you have a complicated rule that does like regular expressions or looks at like multiple levels deep of the request, then you'll consume more and more WCUs and you have a, a limit on 5,000. So that's like the complexity factor of your rules. And you can't go above this this number. Not sure if you can increase this. Oh, if you use over 1500, it affects your cost. I didn't actually know that. So that's interesting. So you want to keep this below 1500 if possible, which means that you don't just want to click all the buttons when we went through like the AWS marketplace rules that had like all the ones that are available. Because I saw some like one was 700, one was 300. They're like some pretty hefty rule sets. So keep that in mind when you're, you're working with WAF. It can get costly if you go too crazy with this. But 5000 seems to be the maximum that you have here. Anyways, that's a little bit about WCUs. You'll see this number change when we come back to this later, when we look for SQL injection, which is like another part of this um, demo. Anyways, uh, let's keep on going here. Click on next. Okay. We're going to just, yeah, we don't need to do anything here because we only have one rule. Uh, if you want to configure some metrics, it's always a good idea to do this. So you can evaluate kind of and see graphs over time. And then you can enable sampling as well so that you can see kind of what the actual requests look like. So that's always good to have. It will incur additional costs. Well, not a lot, but it's just CloudWatch. So it's not too much. Anyways, uh, let's go to continue now with next in the bottom right. And then this is just asking us to review everything that we have here, which is totally fine. Okay. Now, before I do this, I just want to show you my API gateway and what it responds with. It's a very simple API gateway that I associated with this web ACL and it's right here. It's basically a single, it's a test stage. It's got a single endpoint called slash pets and it returns a list of pets. Okay. it's very, very trivial for any method here. And so if we invoke this API gateway endpoint, this is basically what we get, right? We get this list of 
pets. So we have Karita the beagle here. And you can see there's like five or so of these. If we refresh this, we can see like this is working right now. Like if I do this multiple times, this is going to return the same results over and over again and nothing really changes. Okay. So let's go ahead and go back to our other tab and create this web ACL. Remember that I set the web ACL rule to block traffic if you originate from Canada. I am from Canada. So once this is created, we should see that response change from the API endpoint. So let's do this now. So create web ACL. Now this does take a minute or so, but I'll just fast forward it once it's all done and we'll just see the result. Okay, so this only took a minute or so. You can see now that we do have a web ACL here. So this is now in effect. So let's go back to invoke this API gateway again. So let's just refresh this. And if it doesn't work right away, that's fine. Sometimes it takes a couple moments to reflect. So I'm just gonna reload the page here. So, okay, so it looks like it hasn't reflected yet. Now let's just give this another minute or so to see if it is working correctly. Okay, so now you can see it is, okay, so it's a little bit kind of in and out right now, but uh, there we go. So we got message forbidden. It looks like it's kind of shifting over the traffic a little bit, but you can see this is working as intended. Okay, now it's getting more and more consistent over time. Uh, so this is what you will get when the request matches the rule that you specify. Remember, you can also customize this if you want to show something different. And that was in the custom option or custom message option that we saw in the wizard, okay? So this is what you see when a request matches an incoming rule. Okay. So let's go and change this a little bit. Uh, actually, I want to show you what the dashboard looks like that shows you like traffic that's getting, getting through and, and like being allowed or blocked or being counted. So if you go to the web ACL now and you click on demo and sometimes, okay, so it does take a couple of moments for this to reflect uh, for the metrics that is to reflect, but you can see there's a whole bunch of different options that you can review now, right? And so you can apply a bunch of data filters here. So I only want to look at like blocked or allowed or capture or challenge in some like time range and what time zone, whatever it may be. And you can see here, if we just refresh this, this, maybe this number will change, but you can see two requests. Uh, there were a total, two of them got blocked. And this thing will actually show you some pretty cool graphs that you can see down here. So what were the top 10 rules that were blocking the request? So you can see if you have multiple associated, which were the ones that were like the main contributor. Uh, you can see the action totals, the different device types. So this is coming from desktop for me. Don't have bot detection on which countries your traffic is coming from. Uh, if someone was using like an attack type like SQL injection or XSS, you'd be able to see it here. Uh, so there's a bunch of interesting information that you have at your disposal here, right? And then what else can we see here? there just before we go into rules because I do want to kind of bring you there later. You can go to CloudWatch login sites. Uh, you, you do need to enable this first so you can run queries on your data. A sampled request, this will, this will actually show you what some of the requests look like. So you can see here, this was my Canada origin blocker. This was the URI and we blocked it. And I believe if you click on this, I'm actually not sure. I don't want to do anything that, yeah. So this is some of the detail of the request that came in, which is just some details here. Anyways, that gives you more information on the sampling of requests. And then there's logging and metrics where you can look at the different metrics that are available for you. If you want to enable custom response bodies, you can do that as well. We can see the associated AWS resources and we can choose to add a new one if we want. We can just click on add AWS resources here. Uh, we can also like remove this one if we want by clicking disassociate after we check the box, but everything is looking good here. Uh, and then let's do another example now, right? So let's go back to rules and I, I want to modify this rule. I want to make it a little bit more interesting, so to speak. Let's pretend now that we have like a SQL injection attack, right? Uh, and we want to, maybe we want to create a rule that if we have anyone from Canada that contains a SQL injection attack, then we want to block them, okay? I don't know, this is like just some random thing I made up just to show you some of the, the power of this uh, system. But assume that's something we want to do, right? So we're going to go back into this rule and we're gonna to go to edit now. And let's do something a little bit more interesting. So if a request, instead of just matches the statement, we're gonna do matches all of the statements, okay? And what this is gonna do now is you can see statement one, right? Because we're gonna have multiple different rules. So you can see there's an and here, and then here's statement two. Like you can add another one, so you can have three. So one and two and three. But let's just do one and two right now, right? Where the first one is what we had before, so originates from Canada. Let's do the second one. We want to evaluate the query string. So what's in the user input? 
and we want to match a certain type. And this is the condition that you can test for, right? So if something contains a string, starts with a string, ends with, contains word, matches a regular expression, a size match detection, a contain SQL injection attacks, which is actually what I want, or XSS. There's a lot that you can do here in order to evaluate what is inside of the you know, parameter or whatever that you're inspecting. So let's do contain SQL injection attacks. And this is just a convenient way that uh, it's like a pre provided library that helps detect this for you. And so you just have to select it and then text transformation. We don't wanna do any text transformation here, but if you want to like decode or like lowercase things or URL decode or base64, you can do that here. Um, but we're just gonna do, if anything's in the query string that contains SQL injection, then we want it to match this rule, right? You also have this option for sensitivity level. I noticed I tried both low and high. I found I got better results with high, but you're gonna have to test this out for your application. Maybe it'll cause a little bit too much like exceptions for you, but uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. So let's click on high now. And if any of this is true, then we wanna block it. That's good. I'm gonna show you what CAPTCHA looks like in a minute too, but uh, we'll get there. Let's go to save rule now and go to and you can see the wcus rose right so the sql injection consumed 30 of those wcus so something to keep in mind uh, so let's go to save now and okay so this looks like it worked right away so i'm just going to give this a minute to update before we go and test it out okay so this should be updated by now so let's head over back into our separate tab here and let's just refresh this. Now this should work, right? Because we don't, we, we're not matching the end. Like I'm originating from Canada, but the query string is just a normal query string. There's no SQL injection that's inside here. So if everything is updated and I refresh, we should get the results back. So let's try this. There we go, right? So this is working as expected. So let's add a parameter here that will make this appear as if it's a SQL injection attack, right? So let's say, colon name is equal to, okay, I actually have the autocomplete there for you. Um, so this is a URL encoded statement here. So it's like just got some some content in here. You can kind of see the, the remnants of the query statement. So select from doing some stuff, yada, yada, yada. So because now I am from Canada and I have SQL that's in my query string, we should get a forbidden here. So let's try this, enter, there you go. So this is working is exactly as intended. Uh, so let's try the CAPTCHA thing now. So let's just go back really quick and we're gonna go and edit this rule and just change the action to be CAPTCHA. And here you go. So you can set like a, a immunity time, by the way, for this. Like if you want to not ask them again for a certain period of time. Anyways, let's go to save rule now and save. And again, let's give this a moment or so to reflect. Okay, so it's been about 15 seconds. Let's go back to our endpoint here and try to refresh this. So I'm from Canada and I still have the SQL injection inside my query string. So this should trigger a CAPTCHA. Let's try it. There we go. So here's the CAPTCHA, complete the security check, begin, choose all the curtains. Oh man, that looks right. There you go. So when you complete the capture, you're able to get your response back. Okay. So that's AWS WAF. Let me just show you how to clean it up really quick. So you want to go back to web ACLs. You want to go here, click on your little tab and go to delete because there is a charge for this. So make sure you do that and then click on type in delete, click on delete here. Do, 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 do. Okay. So you need to disassociate it first. Let's go to demo. Sorry about that. Associated and disassociate and remove this API gateway from it. And now we should be able to delete. So let's go back into here and delete this and try that again and click on delete. There we go. So now everything is cleaned up and we're good to go. No extra charges for us. Um, so yeah, this was AWS Web Application Firewall or WAF. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment sections below. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.